16 million working age Nigerians, 35.5 million are employed full time. That's 30 percent. I give you the context. I give you the history. I fight fake news with facts. Kayo Day. No, Kayo Day. I will. I will let you talk. Kayo Day. Kayo Day. I will let you talk if you let me talk. Kayo Day. That's why more and more Lagosians are tuning in. Half a million Lagosians. 720,000. 970,000. Over 1 million Lagosians. They know that if you give me your afternoon, I will give you hard facts. You know, Sandra, all going beyond the headlines and focus on the facts. I am Sandra Ezekwasili, and these are your hard facts. First hard fact of the day, 209 confirmed cases yesterday, 209 uh, COVID cases. Gombe alone had 109, Gombe State that is, uh, Lagos had 13 and it's a low number but um, if you see how uh, Gombe did not give warning before it went insane, right? So I'm hoping that that's a lesson for those of us who are in Lagos to take all the precautions that we can. Second hard fact of the day the round of 16 debates for the i beg to differ tournament has been set it's it, you know um all eight matches uh, will take place next week now we tried and tried to call daniel Onyoho, who won the face-off live here uh on uh, was it monday yes it was monday on monday we tried from monday all the way until wednesday to to call him his number just wasn't connecting it was switched off throughout and uh it never rang and he didn't reply our email either we sent an email informing him that he had made it into the uh, round of 16 he didn't respond he didn't send out his details which means that oluchi will now be going forward uh, from next week, Monday. So Monday, November 8th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., we're going to have Emanuela Nadi versus Sarah Ojuku and Ruth Okorocha versus Chiagozie Isido Obonaugu. Then on Tuesday, November 9th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m., we'll have Joseph Oyameaba versus Uchechuku Golding and Timilei Paul Balaji versus Ebuka Timothy Ebule. Uh, they will be playing on Tuesday, 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Wednesday, November 10th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. It's going to be Tanvita Kushik versus Miriam Adekunle and Angel Osara versus Hamid Olarewaju. Then on Thursday, November 11th from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Thursday dates will be different. Uh, Thursdays will be 5 to 6 p.m. Now we're going to have Chike Sylvia Okorigbo versus Oluchi Akwarandu and Anita Dushima Nule versus Afolaring Emmanuel Bosari. So those are the two people who will be playing next week Thursday, 5 to 6 p.m. Those are your eight round of 16 matches for next week. Uh, the winners will return for the quarterfinals week after next because remember they are all playing for a first prize of one million naira speaking of one million one million legations cannot be wrong thank you for listening to this show and uh, as always we have a great show for you we'll start with the big three where we talk about the latest from the Jared street uh uh building collapse then let's talk about the nba moving to take action against malami on Odili road and then Let's talk about the ICPC and SSS busting an exam malpractice ring involving students, their parents, lecturers, and security people at exam centers. The award-winning League of Extraordinary Nigerians is at 4 o'clock today, 4.30. We'll talk about a woman whose fiancé wants to uh, wants her to put her houses in his name when they get married. He also wants her tenants to start paying the rent to him. True life story. I'll tell you about it at 4.30. Make sure you're here when we have that conversation. On today's Big Hard Fact, we'll travel to Anambra, uh, where we take a look at what's happening in the lead-up to the Guber elections. I have two guests. SBM Intelligence has a report on voter reluctance due to IPOB. Uh, they'll talk to us about that. Then we have Kenneth Kuoforma, who is Nigeria Info, uh, well, who is Wazobia FM's head of news in Onitsha. As usual, there will be updates every hour on the hour. But first, let's get into today. Today's big three. I am Sandra Ezekwasili Lagos, and these are your hard facts. This is the big three. The big three. On hard facts. On 99.3 Nigeria Info. 
Will the panel get to the truth about the building collapse? Will the NBA's probe into the orderly raid yield results? And have Nigerians accepted exam malpractice as normal? Those are your big three, Lagos. Let's talk. Our first story is still the tragic building collapse on Gerard Street in Ikoi. Eight men and one woman have been rescued from the rubble. Uh, Nema has updated the confirmed death toll to 38. 35 men and three women. Emmanuel Omoka is at the mortuary right now and he's joining us for an update. Emmanuel, how are you? I'm fine. Good afternoon, Sandra. Good afternoon. What activities are going on at the morgue right now? Okay, so I left the mock at about IDH Yaba. Mm-hmm. Um, that's about an hour ago now, okay. or hour 30 minutes now. I've been waiting here to see the head of the department of the pathology and forensic department of the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital. Okay. And I just finished having a conversation with the, with the head of the department, Dr. Soyemi, okay. and he told me that he can't confirm nor deny anything you know from his own desk he referred me to the chief medical director and the commissioner of health Mm. to speak on the autopsy that is being conducted right now Mm. however Mm. while i was entering the department i observed that autopsy is being carried on okay i saw it about four corpses okay how do you how do you know their corpses from the site and that, that's the thing, you see, I can't confirm mm. nor deny mm. that they are from the site. And that was why I went to meet the HOD to actually make that confirmation mm. known to me. Mm. But he said, he referred me, you know, to the CMD and the Commissioner for Health. Okay. Um, yes. and, and those are the people that you're waiting to see? Yes, that, those are the people I'm waiting to see. To At see the moment. If they speak on it, if they're going to give us further clarifications. Because mm. the, the, the bulk of the cops is at IDH, Yaba. And Yaba to this place is about uh, 15, 20 minutes. Even if it's in an ambulance, it's going to take about 15 minutes to get here. And they have to move each corpse, you know, or four corpses at a time down here, then take them back again. Because uh, at IDH, I was told that they lack, or rather they don't have the facilities to carry out autopsy there. They just have a morgue, a standard morgue. But here, it's a forensic and pathology department. So how they have all the equipment, they have everything to conduct an autopsy here at the moment. I see. So they have to move the cops way up and down, you know, over and over again mm-hmm. before they'll be able to complete the process. Mm. Now, we're hearing that um, even though government has said that people can identify their loved ones' bodies, they're still being denied access at the mortuary. Is there any confirmation or update on that? You know, did you yes, see anything while um, you were there? At, at at IDH, yes, um, family members are not allowed to identify the cops. Yeah. So mm. what they do when you get there and you identify yourself as a relative of a victim, mm. what they ask you to do is to write your name and provide a photograph of the victim, mm. which the person at the front desk there keeps, mm. you know, in a notebook, okay. you know, just for purposes. Then they refer you to Ikeja. That's this last week at Ikeja, mm-hmm. that this is where the autopsy is being conducted. Mm-hmm. You know, so they, they keep going back and forth. And that is why some few minutes ago, when the governor briefed press, some of the family members waited for him there and mm-hmm. were agitated because they've been going back and forth and mm-hmm. have not been able to identify the cops of their relatives. I mean, I'm, I'm also trying to see the, 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 the logic of that. If it's a building collapse, I mean, faces are probably not... Um, you know, intact. So I'm trying to see how much a picture helps here. And you know, we're not exactly a country that has um, database uh, of uh, people's fingerprint or, or teeth records or things like that. So um, I, I don't know exactly what's happening with that. But um, I, I want to move away from that. And then let's talk about uh, something I've seen from CNN's Stephanie Busari, uh, that they've spoken with the engineers who reportedly pulled out um, the are pulled out of the project and they confirm the story. Is there any confirmation or new information on that from your end? Okay, so um, on the engineer, on the, on, the, on the engineer, we're still working to reach him presently. You see, the telephone, his telephone numbers are not going. He's mm-hmm. only, only one private line which people who are close to him are holding the number, like they're holding the number. Um, you understand that this case is very tricky mm. and 
a lot of people are not uh, very careful about it, mm. especially now that the Lagos State government is involved fully in the matter. Mm. So they're looking at the criminal side to it, and people are not very sure how matters will take a turn. Mm. So they're very careful about the people that they bring out to the light. And that is why you see that even when the CNN spoke with him, mm. you know, it's, it's not really out there. You see, I... I we're working to send an email to him mm -hmm. right now because mm -hmm. we've been able to get an email address, a mm -hmm. personal email address that is for him. Mm -hmm. and would we'll send an email to him hoping that between today and tomorrow we'll get a response okay. from him. Okay. Aside that, mm -hmm. I'm also seeking to get to his office to also reach out to him personally. Mm -hmm. We're doing everything within our means to ensure that we reach out to them and we can confirm the authenticity of that later. Mm. Okay. All right then. Emmanuel Awoka, our correspondent out in the field, been following this story since it broke on Monday. Emmanuel Awoka, thank you very much and stay safe out there, okay? Thank you, Sandra. Lagos, Tony Ayinde will chair the Governor's Probe Panel into the collapse. He's the president of the Nigeria Institute of Town Planners, NITP. The other five members include a structural engineer, an architect, a builder, and lawyers. Governor Songolu swore them in yesterday and gave them 30 days to submit their findings. Um, the Punch is reporting that they've seen the actual approval documents from the Lagos State Physical Planning Permit Authority. They've seen the actual approval documents uh, for uh, for the address in question. And according to the punch, the approval was for 15 stories, not 21. This is relevant because remember that Bolonga Oki, the suspended uh, building control agency MD, he has insisted that the approval was for 15 uh, stories, while Deputy Governor Hamzat says that the approval was for 21 stories. Now, if the punch and Bolohoki are correct, then the building developers violated the approval. But that's elated from Jared Street. Lagos, tell me your thoughts. Women, the numbers are back now. So 01465 7190. 01465 7190. Uh, that's for women. For men, 0700 993 993 993. 0700 993 993 993. You can also share your thoughts with us via WhatsApp. WhatsApp is 080 959 75805. 080-959-75805. Hello. Hello. Thank you for calling. What's your name? Yeah. Comrade Dike Chukwu from Water Farm. Welcome, Comrade. Yeah, the regular man. The quarrel Yes, and I'm very, very angry. I've been crying since Monday. Why? And because of the last building. And how do you expect that they should give somebody only one person, one license, to be important iron and cement? And where there is no competition, there is about to be spread iron and cement to build that end. And the man that is suspended, he said the truth that that end can carry only 15 stories. Eh? But the power that they do is not, they are not taking it to 21 story building. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm hearing you. So, what I want to say, make this governor, make God bless him all, make, the, make this panel, nobody like the end that panel, we'll be saying we never hear a So, what I want to appeal now is that governor, should pay the victim people. Don't give that time, their people. Make governor pay them 30, 30 million. Because one of my, one of my brother was telling me, say, then when I will call, the people hold on that, they don't die finish. That's why my joy is still confirmed. Why are you telling me, say, then when I want one, people hold on that? So maybe you give them 30, 30 million, the victims of the dead. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Sam in Satellite Town is on the line. Hi, Sam. Sandra, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I'm lucky. I'm lucky this afternoon. <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, Sa um, Sandra, first of all, in Gerard Road, not Street. Oh, Gerard Road. Mm, Thank that, you. That, yes, Road. Thank you. Uh, secondly, well, you see, whenever things happen, we keep on looking for who to blame and not to blame. Generally, many, many, many of us behave the same way, whether it is in the hospital, it is in school, in the buildings, uh, you know, construction or whatever. So my issue now is that let them do independent investigation or judicial inquiry, not so this putting government, um, you know, workers together at the whatever level, maybe those governor knows and the rest of that, they do not see a proper report. So, but I thank you for the journey for you. are doing a lot. All of you, nobody is, uh, you know, put aside. 
Okay. God bless all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam, for calling. Women, call us on 01465-7190. 01465-7190. If you're abroad, get in touch with us via Skype. Skype is Nigeria Info FM. Let's speak with Meg. She's in Lekki. Hi, Meg. Hi, Sandra. I told her you to greet you when she gets to the office. Okay. <laughs> met her briefly today. How are you doing? Um, My name is Meg. I'm very well. Welcome. Okay. Um, on this issue on Gerald Road, mm. it's quite obvious that um, there are things that are being hidden from the public because I would believe that you that is in the studio can authoritatively tell me things about your company than me that is outside. That's right. So the person on ground who said the approval was for 15 has been suspended. And my question is, how do you suspend somebody you should be asking questions at this time? And it's quite sad that there are a lot of contradictions, 20, 20, 15, 21, or oh, there are three different buildings, some are 15, some are 20. You know, you, it, 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 it's quite sad. But that's what it is with the Lagos State Government. They don't do anything. At the privilege of two buildings in Lagos, Sandra, they don't do anything. Between you and your God and your conscience, hmm. you are the one that will determine whether you want to use the right materials hmm. or you don't want to use the right materials. Hmm. If you don't want to use the right materials, nobody checks, nobody does anything. All they want to do is get money. Get money from you and close their eyes so the excess is going around. Somebody... It's hiding something from us. And like the speaker that Mr. Disu interviewed in the morning, what are you taking people that stay not the same to do an investigation? Get independent people who will speak the truth. There are other town planners, there are other architects, there are other people you can get. Not the people around the government officials. Because they won't say the truth. At the end of the day, nothing will come out. See a building collapse in Lekki where I live. Nothing will come out of it. It's just noise. After the noise, we go back to normal, Sandra. This is Nigeria. Unfortunately, it's very sad. I'm paying though because a lot of adults told 38 at that today. What are we talking about? The building was shut down in June. What was the thing that was done between June and when it collapsed for them to say continue with the building? What happened? My sister, Nigeria needs... I don't know whether it's God we need or an iron fist. I don't know, Sandra. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Meg, for calling. Kingsley and Sue Larry is on the line. Hi, Kingsley. Hello. Hello, Kingsley. Welcome. Yeah, I'm calling. Hi, uh, today. Oh, Collings, welcome. Uh, very well. Go ahead. Yeah, right. I'm calling from Sue Welcome. Go ahead. Yeah. You see, the first day that the deputy governor went to that place, mm. he told Nigerians and the whole world that the approval of that building was 21 story. 21 story building. Am I lying? Yes. I'm not sure what I'm saying. Say, say yes. it again. Say it again. But, but, but I said, hmm. the first day the deputy governor went there, mm -hmm. he said the approval of that building was 21 story building. That's right. That's what he and said. Is, yeah, eh? That's right. That's, uh, what, that's what he said. That's right. Yes. yes. Mm. And now there is another document from the office. They're saying that the building for 15-story building. So which one are we going to take now? But to me, I will take the one of the Lagos State Government approval that the document is there, physical, for people to see. The one where the deputy governor told us, I don't think he was very sure what he was saying. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for calling. 99.3. Hello, Sandra. Hello. What's your name, ma'am? Yeah, Alex. How are you? I'm very well. Welcome, Alex. Sandra, I don't have the words to com commend you guys for the level of coverage <clears throat> that you guys have done on this um, building collapse incident. It's been wonderful. Thank you. It's been wonderful as in real life, live updates. It's just been wonderful. Thank you. All right. So let me just quickly say a few things, Sandra. You mm -hmm. see, um, Nigeria is like a bad movie right now. It's unraveling very quickly. You know, we have seen where snakes ate money where snakes swallowed money. We've seen where monkeys came and stole money from the secretariat. We've seen where, where the, the army, you know, they shot at people and then they lied and said they didn't shoot. Even the governor of Lagos State, you know, even the most recent one, the raid of the CJ's house, right? So you can understand what I'm saying. Nigeria yes. is like a bad movie. 
between two people, the politician in office and the civil servant, they can transform this country. For the rest of us, it's just for us to follow with an effective national orientation agency. If the civil servant and the, 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 the politician agree that they will change this country, the rest of us will fall in line. I hear people say that there's something wrong with Nigeria. There's nothing wrong with Nigerians. We are just living in the time. I want to ask the governor, um, Sandra, hmm. please, can I ask the governor a question on this issue? Sure. Dear Mr. Sonwolu, in case you are listening, can you please guarantee me that after all this is over, you will have, we will have a website where we can log on to and see the features of every single building in this Lagos state. Mm. Sandra, mm? thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Alex, for calling. Um, we've got uh, 1 minute 30 seconds, so let's take one more call. 99.3, hello. Hello? Hello? Yes, welcome to the show. What's your name, sir? Yeah, my name is Wale. Wale, you have to turn that radio off, then go ahead. Yeah, Sandra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to speak about the building that collapsed in my city. You see, can you hear me? I can hear you, barely, yeah. but I can. You see, the, the, the plan is our leader. Wale, are you speaking with a hands-free device? Because your voice is very faint. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I, 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 I don't... Do it. Can, you, can, can you hear me now? Just keep talking like this. Stay where you are now and keep talking like that. Go ahead. Hey, but I'm on the way, but I'm, I'm using my FP. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, maybe call us yes. back when you've packed or something, because it's, um, it's not working out. Let's take a look at messages we have on WhatsApp, because we have to take a break anyhow very soon. On WhatsApp is 080-959-75805. Um, this message here, it's a, it's a building collapse. is a recurring decimal in Lagos. If there's no consequence for all that are culpable, then it will keep on repeating itself in the future. That's a message from ADBC from Shomolu. ADBC, thank you very much for your message. Presido, with the report from The Punch about the number of floors, I think the deputy governor ought to be fired or suspended instead of the man that was that was suspended. <laughs> thank you, Presido. Alright, thank you very much for your message. We have more messages we have here on WhatsApp, but we'll take a look at them after this commercial break. I'm Sandra Ezekwesili on social media. We're streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. This is Hard Facts. Don't go away. More conversation, more talk, more true life, they say, is hard to find. Get away from me! But what happens when the one you found is bound with complications? No one can love the beast.
Uh, so when you're looking at that, you need to be looking at the lens of if you're looking at the Bible, it means you know that it's true. And if you know that you're wrong, it means that you knew that you had error and you need to uh, repair it. So let's not do that. Rules are rules. So let's see. We called you at 1.15 p.m. on Monday. 1.15 p.m. on Monday. 1.15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 times. Uh, 9 on Monday uh, and um, 1 on Tuesday. And, you know, no call from you. Sorry. Uh, sorry, Abby? Is that it? Hold on. What am I saying? Oh, yeah. So, no, no, no. Sorry. So 5 on Monday, five uh, 4 on Tuesday. And then the one I just dialed just now. So that makes it 10. Well, better luck next time. Let's move on to our second story, shall we? It's 29 minutes now, past 3 o'clock. And for our second story, we take another look at what's happening um, in the home of the Odilis. The Nigerian Bar Association may take action against the magistrate who approved the Odili Road uh, and, attorney, and the... Um, the elderly raid and the attorney general. So that's our second story. So they, they're they're hoping that they will take um, action against the attorney general and those who approved the raid on the house of the Odilis. That's what the punch is reporting. They claim that the NBA took the decision at their national ESCO meeting on Tuesday. The NBA wants to report the AGF Abubakar Malami to its legal practitioners um, disciplinary committee LPDC and its legal practitioners privileges committee LPPC. Now the addition of the LPPC there is interesting to me because Malami is a senior advocate of Nigeria and the LPPC is the body that has a right to strip um, SANs of the title. Now, why is the NBA ESCO petitioning against Malami? The punch says uh, that uh, they believe Malami is the one who's sanctioning many of the attacks against the judiciary. They, they're quoting an unnamed uh, source as a person who says that. And then there's Emmanuel Iyanna, the chief magistrate in Abuja. The NBA intends to report him to the Judicial Service Commission. Because we've talked a lot about Judicial Service Commission. I don't know if you remember that. We talked about it a lot during the Chief Justice Onoga and Saga. Uh, they are the body that is empowered to investigate, try, and penalize judges. And the NBA wants Iyanna to face them because they don't buy his excuse that he was deceived into granting the warrant used in the raid. So that's the latest from the NBA on the orderly raid. What do you say? What do you think about this? Men call me on 0700-993-993-993. Women call me on 01465-7190. 993 for men, for women, 01465-7190. Um, hello, thank you very much for calling us. Hi, Sandra. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm very well. What's your name? Vincent. Vincent. Good to have you on the show. Yeah. Sandra. Hmm? Uh-huh. Thank you. <laughs> 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 oh wow <laughs> you called me just so i'll say mm. okay 99.3 hello Hello, Sandra. good to have you on the show good afternoon good afternoon this is malik speaking hi malik sandra i phone you the way things happen in nigeria okay can you remember when the national assembly invaded i mean the gss invaded the national assembly yes who did they sack the head of gss right okay so what is what who came to arrest now is it the police is this DSS? So the government have no right or to anybody to have no right to give us excuses. You start whoever is helping the people because they cannot go on their own to arrest. Somebody gave them to go ahead. If it's the police that did that, from the area they came from, is it the, the area command or any any uh, police station there? The DPO should be fired. From the DPO, you know who gave the warrant, from who ordered them to keep that warrant of arrest or to invade that house. No, we like we like rice and beef on Nigeria. Story, story. That is why we don't do the job. Sandra, mm -hmm. do you know our biggest problem? What's the biggest problem? That go. That go on too much. Thank you. Which one be Tabo again? You are teaching me something new every day on this show. What's Tabo, please? Eh? Ah, now wow. Okay. Let's keep those messages coming. Uh, the numbers to call 01465 7190 0700 993 993 993. Chisomi is on the line. Hi, Chisom. Hi. Oh, so sorry. <laughs> Hi. 
Hi, Sandra. How this are my you? first time calling into your show. I, well done. Thank well done. I always enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, so apologies to ask this question. I'll weigh, into, I'll weigh in on the topic, but there's a program that always comes on, I've noticed, from 1 p.m. Okay. And the talks are really rich. And I always listen in to get the program, but I never do. Okay. So I think it's something on insecurity. And I've checked your Facebook page and Instagram page. Mm. I can't seem to find what the, oh, the it, it happened. The seminar it, or something. It, it happened um, during um, our anniversary celebrations. It was a security summit. So you can oh, you can find it um, in the podcast section of our website. So go to um, search, go to listen again on our website. You see okay. the security summit and then you can listen to your heart's content. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, then on the issue at hand, mm. to be very honest, we all know this. In fact, uh, people keep saying, oh, we need people, we need them to come and explain. They never explain anything. And to be very honest, this thing, this issue is going to still die a natural death. Mm. And I'm happy, I'm glad that they messed with the wrong people. I'm happy that they are taking them up. If both the magistrate has said he was deceived, let him come and explain how he was deceived into it. Mm. So that means you're not competent. You don't know what your duties are, that someone can just come and deceive you. So if they deceived you, come and let us know what happened. You understand? Because mm. to be very honest, I just, I, it's very fishy. This is a ploy. And we all know where this is getting to. So, but I, let me not just, let me not say anything more. So I don't incite anything. But I think we all know what this is all about, to be very honest. Thank you very much. Thank well you. Done. Thank you, Chisom. Well done. I actually prefer that, you know, what Chisom just did there, um, you know, than what a lot of people try to do on this show. And then I'd say, okay, I'm going to give me proof now. And the person would say, hey, I don't have proof. If you see, communicate who, communicate who, ask me, Sandra, do you have your own facts? But that's the thing about making comments uh, on on air. If you're gonna say anything at all, you have to you have to back it up. You know that's why there's nothing that I say that I'm not quoting the person that said it, or I'm not telling you the date it happened. I'm not telling you when and when that news story broke. So you cannot just come and say, you know, just guy, believe me, I know it. Like give you, you, can, <laughs> it, you know. So do what you some did just there. I liked that. Let's speak with uh, Michael. Michael is in Aja. After Michael, we'll move on to our next and final story. Hi, Michael. Hi, Sandra. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Welcome. Yeah, um, my name is Michael. I'm calling from Aja. So um, I think Nigerians are actually very funny, if I may say that. Um, so I've been following this story keenly to know um, how Nigerians are going to react, right? Um, I don't know why every time we keep fighting ourselves on behalf of the airlines. We keep fighting and arguing on behalf of the airlines. This is the same woman who actually made sure that her husband got away with his loot. Nobody can prosecute him. Nobody can ask him questions. And now the same elite, the same woman, has actually uh, faced exactly what we are facing as citizens. And everybody how, how did she do that? Can I ask? How did she do that? The, the, the point is, the husband got a, judge, a, a judgment that he cannot be prosecuted. Of course, you can't. Was, was she the judge on that case? She doesn't have to be the judge. So she wasn't the judge on that case. But she doesn't have to be the job. But see, this no, but if you say no, but if you say that she made him get away with it, you're implying uh, that she was the judge on that case. Was she the uh, judge Sandra, on that case? This, this is like saying the wife of the inspector general of police got away with the situation, and you then say no, the inspector general of police knows nothing about in it. In a this court, is, in a court of law, the inspector of general, the person saying that the inspector of general, uh, inspector general of police knows something about it, will have to prove that he does. That, if you can't point, prove but, it, but, but, if you can't prove it, then don't so, say okay, it. So, where I'm going now, Sandra, is mm. very simple. Okay. When this judgment was passed, where was the NDA? Where were all the sounds that are now screaming? Where were they to challenge whosoever gave this judgment? I think that's my point. I know maybe she was not involved. Okay. My point is just that where were the NDA? Where were the judges? Where were the sounds who were also supposed to stand up and say no? This is a wrong judgment, and this has to be challenged. No, but that's up to the the other side. I mean, if me and you go to court now, and judge gives me a judgment that you say is not favorable, it's up to you to go and appeal or go to the Supreme Court. That's okay, not so up to saying, NBA or the judges or the sons. It's not their okay, business. So are, so are you saying all the sons now who are up in arms, none of them could stand up and say, no, this judgment, I will appeal it? On behalf of the people. But even at because the even at the, the time, sir, even at, even at the time, the, sir, the NBA condemned it. Okay, that, and that's it. Mm. Should we should we leave this one to our condemnation then? Fair enough. 
Thank you very much, Sandra. I appreciate it. <laughs> Thank you for calling us. All right, let's move to our final um, uh, question. You know, it, it actually it, it is actually the NBA's job to call out judgments that they feel are weird. Now, let's take a look at our final story. The ICPC and SSS have arrested 48 people, 48, 48, over exam malpractice. Uh, this was a sting operation against different groups organizing to cheat on the JUPEB exam. Um, this thing involved um, exam takers, their parents, lecturers, security at the exam centers. The affected schools in this thing are Wellspring University, Benin, Christopher University, Moe in Ogun State, and Crown Hill University, Iloring. One of the people arrested is the national president of the Association of Tutorial School Owners because allegedly lots of tutorial centers are uh, actively involved. Allegedly, the students and their parents were paying between 300,000 naira and 500,000 naira to the syndicate to help them cheat. In exchange, the syndicate members were helping them get question papers ahead of time. For those who still could not get the answers after receiving the questions, there was also an exam day service. They pay the security and the admins to let them bring in phones. Meanwhile, there's a group of people somewhere solving the questions, sending them the answers on WhatsApp. The ICPC says they've been monitoring these rings for a while and now they've swooped in on them. When I was reading this thing, I was stunned. The level of sophistication that has gone into this operation and the different types of people involved. Parents, parents are paying to help their children cheat. Teaching their children it's okay to cheat. These are the same parents who will call me and say, oh, these politicians, oh, these corruption, hey. <laughs> so it makes you wonder, does any of us, do any of us have the moral right to talk about corruption in the country when we're capable of this thing. Does this mean that exam malpractice has simply become part of our culture now? Because they say that culture evolves, right? So have we as a society, as a people, have we evolved to the point where exam malpractice is now okay? Have people simply decided... Eh, it's not a bad thing anymore. After all, everything that is bad today, people decided, oh, this thing is bad. And everything that is good today, people decided, oh, this thing is good. So as Nigerians, have we decided, ah, exam malpractice, kilo day. It's not that bad. Not by me, Joe. I don't know. You tell me. 01465-7190 for women. For men, 0700-993-993-993. It reminds me of um, the debaters who sent in their auditions. So a lot of the people who were disqualified uh, submitted um, auditions debating phones. Should phones be uh, used in school? Should students be allowed to use phones in school? And Lagos, I tell you, like... E almost everyone who debated that topic, that subject, copied from the same page. I don't know if it's in a book. I don't know if it's on some Google page. I don't know where they copied it from. But everybody who sent in an audition, let me say 95% of the people who sent in an audition uh, to our I Beg to Differ tournament and argued about phones and students and usage in school, they made the same points, almost word for word. In fact, once I heard in the 21st century, I just said, okay, this is one of them. Like word for word, for in a lot of the cases, word for word, some people managed to tweak their words a bit, but they still ended up making the same exact points. Just dub it. They were even using American examples. I mean, if you're going to dub something, at least fit it to your environment now. But no, they just dubbed it. Phew! And that disqualified a number of people because they couldn't come up with like original points. So if you're one of those students that did that, now you know why um, you're not making it or you didn't make it to the live um, show, which starts on Monday, by the way. Monday, 4 p.m., uh, we will begin our um, I Beg to Differ tournament where one student will get the chance to win one million naira by the time the tournament is over. 
But yeah, back to our conversation about uh, exam malpractice. As Nigerians, have you people decided when I was asleep that exam malpractice is okay? Is this a new part of our culture now? Have we decided, ah, eh, no be bad thing? 99.3, hello. Hello. Hey, hello, Sandra. Hi. It is pronounced Dagbo, not Dagbo. D-A-G-B-O-O. It means gambling. Oh. Inside life. Okay, thank you very much for calling. Calling the wrong line to say that to me, but thank you for calling to teach me. 99.3, hello. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. What's your name? Uh, yeah, this is uh, Machiku Richard. Welcome, Machiku. This is my first time calling your radio station. Oh, we're glad to have you on the show. Thank you. Please, I want to talk on um, the building collapse. Uh, yes, please, go ahead. Go ahead. And the Barame issue. I want to say, let the uh, deputy governor resign honorably. Okay. These are one of the things they do. He's not an expert on the work. He should not consult very well. He came out in public and be speaking that the building was given to uh, one uh, story approval. This is one of the things that happens in this country that makes people begin to look at who we are here. If you refuse to, to resign, the state... State of Assembly should impeach him. Let's begin to do things in a proper way. And for Malami issue, let them withdraw his uh, son. I know that he's a principal officer. His Oga will still retain him. But let us know, let the world know that, yes, Malami is no more his son, that we have a, a, a attorney general that is not his son. So we know that, yes, because we know that no matter what you do, the man will still retain him there. But let them, let them withdraw that his uh, son issue so that we know that Nigeria has an attorney general that is not his son. And we know that that's how it is. So this is my take in these two uh, subjects. Also, you raised today. Uh, all right. Thank you very much for calling. We appreciate it. We appreciate you sharing your thoughts with us. Uh, let's speak with David. Hi, David. Hello, Ada. Good to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you very much, Sandra. Is it doing from Surrey? Welcome. Uh, I am not surprised, Sandra. Hmm. There is allegedly plan to remove Justice Tanko Mohammed with the accusation that the cabal is not happy with him with the way he is handling the judiciary. You know, Sandra, the other time when the judges, some errant judges gave conflicting judgment concerning PDP, which is on Pata Court, the speed, the CJN, some of the justice, those judges, and the compact his authority made PDP to have a peaceful convention. It is making the cabal very, very angry. You know, Justice Orderly is the second most senior judge. So, and Justice Orderly will retire next year, May. So, Tanko will retire in 2023. But the cabal is so angry that they want to remove Tanko at, by all means. Meaning that if they succeed in removing Tanku, Joseph Audrey will be the CJN, and that is what they don't like. So the assault in, 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 on Audrey's house is condemnable. But Sandra, I want to ask, why are senior lawyers in Buhari's administration not calling the attention of the president? Why is Osim Bajo keeping quiet? I know that Malami, in order to impress the president, he, 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 he ordered the operation on the day the president returned to, from Saudi Arabia. I expected the vice president, as a senior lawyer, to call the attention of the president before the president traveled to, for, to, to Scotland. Why is Usim Bado keeping quiet? Why is Ashola not making a statement condemning the, the action of Malami? That is why you see Sandra. Mm. Anybody, any of your associates that fails to criticize you whenever you are wrong, don't love you. Any of your associates that does high service, hoping to get something from you, hiding their feelings, even when you are wrong, even when you are against the law, run away from them. I want to condemn Osim Bajor's silence for not calling the attention of the president before the president gets out to, to Scotland. Here's the room.
Okay. Yes, they do. Thanks for your time. John Owoni says, Sandra, this panel will never get the truth about the building collapse. Committees are set up to cover up things in this part of the world. NSAS panel, what came out of it? It's under this Samuelu led government. Uh, Dagbo in local parlance means dupe, cheat, deceive, to arm to someone out of their belongings. All right, I learned something new. Thank you. Aikabona says, who owns the building? I'm hearing it belongs to a servant politician. Well, there's lots, there are lots of rumors flying around. We don't know uh, the truth one way or the other, but the truth will eventually come out. Uh, Kenneth from Shasha says, this is the reason why the masses no longer take government serious anymore in Nigeria. Uh, government officials tell a lot of lies that make it very difficult for the citizens to trust them. They're paying the price of accumulated lies in the southeast. Imagine the deputy governor of Lagos telling lies to us. I wonder who he's trying to protect by telling us lies. Perhaps one of his political allies might just be the owner of the building, hence the lies. Kenneth uh, Kiran uh, from Shasha with that message there. All right, Kenneth, thank you very much for your message. Ojo, o, Ojaoba Sunday says, by right, the police and other security operatives should protect all law-abiding citizens of the state. But here in Nigeria, security forces protect only politicians and they're also shamefully used by politicians to suppress the people who are supposed to be the employers of politicians when the politicians are wrong. I'm trying to see what this has got to do with any of the stories that um, we're covering at the moment, but okay. On WhatsApp, Gideon from Shangotedo says, uh, exam or practice have become normal. Even in secondary school, parents will know the level of their children. They won't do anything to help those children other than advising the teacher to help them. Even if the teacher gives them advice on what they should do, they'll rather take the children to another school cool that will do what they want and who wants to be losing customers these days this is the reason why we have so much quacks in the country only god can help us and we should also help ourselves hmm Wahala do. Uh, someone says, Babs, Babs from Anik Bano says, Yes, yeah, so President Sandra, parents now pay for exam malpractice. I guess most young students these days are lazy. They don't go to the library uh, like back in the days. Parents and children just want to cut corners. Then why are we complaining about all the different corners that other people are complaining are, are cutting? You know, because, I mean, it starts from small. If you're teaching the children, it's okay to cut corners. It's okay to cheat. They're going to become politicians that cut corners. They're going to become building uh, inspectors that cut corners. They're going to become uh, DSS operatives that invade the house of a of a chief justice. They're going to become the kinds of, you know, they're going to become all kinds of things. The same people that you're calling to these shows to complain about. So I honestly don't, I, I want to hear the logic. If you're a parent that does this, I really want to hear, you know, what the logic is. Mm. Like, I, I really do. As a people, have we simply decided, eh, this is okay. Because if that's it, then let's stop reporting it as exam or practice. Let's just start reporting it as the way Nigerians conduct exams, you know? What do you think? We've got this message here. Sandra, I put myself in the life of those that are trapped in the collapsed building. I imagined how a human being will die such a painful death. Sandra, sometimes I used to think how I'm going to die in this world. Only God knows. I always pray if I'm going to die, let me sleep and not wake up. May God condole the family of the victims and may their souls rest in peace with the Lord. Uh, more messages here. Exam malpractice is being encouraged indirectly by government and education authorities. In primary school, you're told pupils must not fail. You must do all to make sure they pass to the next class. If you do contrary, you will be ordered by your supervisory education authority to pass them. Wayek, NECO exam question papers get leaked online every time the exam is being conducted. A DBC from Shomolu with that message there. My God, this is the person. BK Max from Alimo Show says justice Odili's raid uh, is a testament to the fact that Nigeria is no longer practicing democratic rule. We have unknown gunmen, repentant Boko Haram, social bandits, etc. Sandra, Nigeria as a country isn't working at the moment. All right, I see you've quoted another Patrick O'Bag one for me so that I'll laugh and people will not know why I'm laughing. It will not work out for you. Thank you very much. We'll take one final call and then we'll take a break. Hello. <laughs> Sorry about that. Call back if you can. Hello. 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 Thank you for calling. Hello, my baby. Hey, what's your name? Hey, Tina. How are you, baby? No, yeah, my name's sake. Welcome. Hey, baby. Just come in, my name's sake. You have one minute. Yeah, you get one minute. Okay. 
Don't forget that um, at uh, 4.30 today, after the League of Extraordinary Nigerians, I'll bring you this very interesting story, real-life story, of this young woman who says her fiancé wants her to put her houses in his name when they get married and he also wants her tenants to start paying the rent to him i want to hear what you think about that story so as soon as only sunday is done at um, 4 30 you and i will have that conversation 99.3 hello hello, hello thank you for calling what's your name my name is joy good, afternoon. joy good to have you on the show well done thank you oh well i'll take the well done 99.3 <laughs> hello Hello? Hello, Sandra. Hi, what's your name? My name is Sissy. Good Hi. afternoon. Good afternoon. In fact, all your discussion I want to talk about, but really, let me save the image and go to the one that last one. Okay. School. All right. The only way we can address this issue of school, my exam, my practices, is the size of the day. I'm a teacher by profession. Okay. And for years I've been in education. We are paying more emphasis on certificates, and everybody wants to have it. Okay. And, you know, how do we now go back to the days of the school system where we have technical school, vocational school, hmm. and these people are productive and being, you know, giving something to the society? That's what educational planners and the government should be thinking about. Other than that, we will continue to have millions of people turn out with certificates, first class. Funny enough, now first class, people carry it all about. Two words. You know, it became everybody wants to have it, even people that are not ready and then they are So parents, everybody, teachers, everybody uh, wants to get the certificate and they want to have it too well. They want to have it tested without knowledge. Education is not certificate. Education is knowledge and skill. And until we go back to that, we continue to have it. That's why I just wanted to continue. Mm. But in terms of the building collapse, mm-hmm. as far as Lagos is concerned, mm-hmm. I have experienced it. The other woman that said Lagos said it's not doing anything mm. in terms of they will come, mark, collect money, go back. Even you, as a builder that knows what is right, you mm. go back there. After some time, they will threaten you. Mm. 
mm. and you have to back out. Mm. So, if more buildings are going to fall in Lagos, it's nothing is more done. That's the reality. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. All right. Uh, I think we've got time to take one final call. Um, do, do you mind talking to us for one minute? Hello? Hello? All right, that person's not ready. 99.3, hello. Hello? Thank you for calling. Yes. Woo. Okay, so if you call us, turn your radio off. That's how this works. So we're not going to have time to take any more calls. Let me go instead to Facebook where we have lots of comments. Adejoke Beloshitu says, Educated parents are in support of examination malpractice. It's become a normal trend. There's a lot to do with our educational system. Okay. Uh, Samuel says, collapsed building, the truth will never be known. The agency in charge, suspended boss, told us 15 floors was approved instead of 21. His boss, who has to have his info from the formal, said 21. Uh, We were told by the former that the owner has been arrested, but within minutes it was uh, said that he was inside. For all we know, there are powerful interests in the ownership of the structure. If you ask me, the truth will never come out. Committees are constituted in Nigeria to douse tension and ensure with time people forget. All right. That's all the time we have. The award-winning League of Extraordinary Nigerians is up next. After that, you, me, let's talk. It's four o'clock. Something big is coming, and it starts on the 5th of November, 2021. The Supreme Court basically said the 99.3 Nigeria Info. We are more than just radio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel at Nigeria Info FM. Check us out on Facebook at Nigeria Info 99.3. Follow us on Twitter at Nigeria Info FM and on Instagram at Nigeria Info FM Lagos for live updates as it happens. 99.3 Nigeria Info. Let's talk.